Hi, this is Miss Vital. This is the unit on water, chapter three in the textbook for AP Biology at Summit High School. A water molecule has physical and chemical properties found in no other material. Water covers about 75% of the Earth's surface and is the most abundant compound in most living organisms. The most important property of water is polarity. Polarity is the uneven distribution of electrons within a molecule. A water molecule is two hydrogen atoms joined by an oxygen by single covalent bonds. The oxygen atom is slightly more electronegative, so the electrons that form the bond spend more time closer to the oxygen atom. This gives the oxygen side of a water molecule a negative charge and the hydrogen side of the water molecule a positive charge. The electrical attraction that occurs between the positive sides of one water molecule and the negative sides of another water molecule is called a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds hold water molecules together and are responsible for the unique properties of water. A water molecule can form a maximum of four hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. Cohesion is the tendency of molecules to stick together. It is much stronger for water than other liquids, but it is still considerably weaker than the covalent bonds between hydrogen and oxygen. The evaporation of water from leaves is called transpiration, and it exerts a pulling force of water within the veins of the leaf. This force is, this force is relayed all the way down to the roots where water is pulled in. Hydrogen bonds also give water an unusually high surface tension. Surface tension is a measure of how difficult it is to break the surface of a liquid. A water strider is an insect that takes advantage of water's high surface tension. It can walk on water even though it's denser. Heat is the amount of kinetic energy associated with the movement of the atoms and molecules in a body of matter. Temperature measures the intensity of heat or the average speed of molecules, not the total amount of heat in a body of matter. Heat always passes from warmer to cooler matter. When water is heated, the energy is first used up to break the hydrogen bonds before they can start to move more rapidly. Therefore, water has a higher specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of heat that must be absorbed or lost for one gram of that substance to change its temperature one degree Celsius. A calorie is the amount of heat it takes to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Therefore, the specific heat of water equals one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. Most other substances are less than one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. Water temperature changes slowly compared to other things, like land and water. The temperature of water changes temperature over land. The temperature of water changes slowly, so oceans' consistent temperature helps sustain life on the planet. Water is most dense at 4 degrees Celsius, right before it begins to freeze and crystals form. When water freezes, the hydrogen bonds become stable, and each molecule forms a crystalline structure with its four neighbors. Ice has fewer molecules than an equal volume of liquid water. Ice floats. If it sank to the bottom of lakes, ponds, and oceans, it would seldom have a chance to thaw, and eventually bodies of water would freeze solid and kill most organisms. The liquid water under the ice allows life to exist. Water is a versatile solvent. A solution is a liquid mixture of solvent and solute. The solvent is the dissolving agent and the solute is the substance being dissolved. An aqueous solution is when water is the solvent. We find aqueous solutions inside cells, blood is an aqueous solution, sap is an aqueous solution. Water is so versatile because of its polarity. The polar end of a water molecule acts to pull the molecules of a substance apart causing it to dissolve. A hydration shell forms. A hydration shell is when the water molecules surround the ions of the solute. Ionic and polar compounds can dissolve in water. 
In nature, these solutions help carry nutrients, wastes, and essential compounds through organisms and to organisms in aquatic environments. Hydrophilic means water-loving. Molecules that are soluble in water or are attracted to water are hydrophilic. Hydrophobic means water-fearing. Substances that are not soluble in water or are not attracted to it are considered hydrophobic. We make solutions using measurements in moles. The number of grams of a substance that equals its molecular weight in Dalton's and contains Avogadro's number of molecules is a mole. Molarity is the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. For example, as we know, the atomic weight of an atom is measured in Dalton's. Oxygen has an atomic weight of 16 Daltons, hydrogen has an atomic weight of 1 Dalton, and carbon 12 Daltons. If we take sucrose, which is common table sugar, its formula is C12H22O11. The 12 carbons have a, um, an atomic weight of 12 Daltons, so we multiply 12 times 12. The 22 hydrogens have an atomic weight of one Dalton, and the oxygen has an atomic weight of 16 Daltons, so we multiply 16 by the 11 oxygens. If we add all of those up, we get 342 Daltons. Therefore, if we take 342 grams of sucrose, we have one mole. The number of molecules in a mole of any substance is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd which is Avogadro's number. A mole of sucrose weighs 342 grams and has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in it. In nature, water molecules sometimes break apart into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Hydrogen ions are H+, hydroxide ions are OH-. When water molecules break apart into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, it is called disassociation. The right balance of hydrogen and hydroxide ions in organisms is critical. An acid is a chemical compound that donates hydrogen ions to solutions. For example, hydrochloric acid in the stomach has a pH of 2, urine has a pH of 6, tomato juice 4. The lower the pH, the more acidic, therefore the more hydrogen ions in the solution. A base, which is also called an alkali, is a compound that accepts hydrogen ions and removes them from solution, or it can be a compound that donates hydroxide ions to the solution. For example, seawater is 8.5, ammonia is 11.7. The higher the pH, the more basic. The, therefore, it has lower hydrogen ions or higher hydroxide ions. pH stands for potential hydrogen. If it's below 7, it's an acid. If it's above 7, it's a base. If it's at 7, it's neutral. Therefore, the hydrogen ions equal the hydroxide ions. This is found in pure water. It is also the solution inside most living cells. Blood has a pH of 7.4, also very close to neutral. Each pH unit represents a tenfold change in the concentration of hydrogen ions. pH of 2 has 10 times more hydrogen ions than a pH of 3. A buffer is a substance that resists changes in pH by accepting or donating hydrogen ions. For example, carbonic acid is a common buffer found in organisms. Buffers are in biological fluids and they're very important for controlling pH in organisms. This is another scale of pH, and it shows some more examples of bases at one end, like the lye in drain cleaners. Bleaches are also very basic, and remember, strong bases can be just as caustic as strong acids. When we move down the opposite end and look at the strong acids, we have things like the hydrochloric acid that's in our stomach and battery acid. These are also very caustic. 
In any solution, the total concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ions is equal to 10 times minus 14th molar concentration. Therefore, if something is neutral, it has 10 to the minus 7 hydroxides and 10 to the minus 7 hydrogen ions. If it's an acid, it has a higher amount of hydrogen ions and a lower amount of hydroxide ions. If it's base, it has a higher amount of hydroxide ions and a lower amount of hydrogen ions. For example, 10 to the minus 4 hydrogen ions and 10 to the minus 10 hydroxide ions is an acid. Remember, negative 4 is a higher number than negative 7. So when the hydrogen ions go from negative 7 to negative 4, they increase. When the hydroxide ions go from negative 7 to negative 10, they decrease. If we look at the exponent on the hydrogen ions, that is the number for pH. So for neutral, the exponent on the hydrogen ions is 7. It's a pH of 7. For an acid, if the number is lower than 7 or if it's negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, those are actually higher numbers, meaning there's a higher number of hydrogen ions, that's an acid. So the exponent on the hydrogen ions determines the pH. If we look at our example, that acid has a pH of 4. Acid rain is acid precipitation. It is rain or snow with a pH below 5.6, which is the normal pH for rain. About 4% of the lakes in the United States are dangerously acidic, and 10% of the lakes in the eastern United States are too acidic. It results from sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides being released during the burning of fossil fuels, things like oil, gas, and coal. When these oxides mix with water, sulfuric acid and nitric acid form. Rain with a pH as low as 2 has been recorded in the eastern United States, and fog as low as 1.7, which is lower than your stomach acid, in Los Angeles. Tall smokestacks can cause acid rain to fall thousands of miles away. The worst impact of acid precipitation occurs when snow melts in the spring, and a sudden increase of acidity occurs in bodies of water. This is also when eggs and young are being produced. Acid precipitation also damages soil mineral balances, which can affect trees. They can have lower tolerances to cold, and they can become weak. Acid precipitation can erode man-made structures and also contribute to smog. The good news is, is that the emissions of sulfur oxides have de decreased significantly in the United States, Canada, and Europe, causing a decrease in acid rain. Laws that reduce emissions in cars have also reduced acid rain. Energy conservation, which includes burning less fossil fuels, can also help to reduce acid rain.